two, three. Hey guys, so this is the expert coming to you here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to modify the Nerf Dark Tag 2003 Blaster. Uh, as far as I know, this does not have any more of a formal name, considering back then Nerf didn't really care about naming all their junk. Alright, so, after you've unscrewed all of the screws on the, uh, all of the uh, exterior, there are the two up here in the front, that's it, like the, the slide really, uh, that's it, are smaller. Uh, this one, this particular one on mine, was completely stripped, so I had to do some personal renovation to it. Um, hopefully your blaster won't be that terrible. But, slide comes off. It's important to note that there is this little pin. This is what causes the um, blaster to actually be primed. There's a pullback on the spring, which I'll show you once we open it up. But there's also a little spring in here that uh, has to be threaded onto here. So you get that nice snappy return. So that's it. the spring actually pulls it back. Uh, but you can set those off to the side. It's important to keep track of all your screws. Um, if you loosen, you can't put your blaster back together. So, we're going to pop it open, and I've already loosened or taken all of mine out. Uh, if it really jams, you can uh, pry it open with a flathead screwdriver slowly. But if it's stuck, it's probably because you've got one that's either re-threaded or just was not unscrewed in the beginning. Uh, up here on the very top, I'm sure you can see that. Uh, up here right here on the top is the tasker rail part. It'll pop out most often. Uh, not that big of a deal. Uh, just slides back on and you can put it in there. I would put it off to the side for now and worry about it when you put it back together. So this is what the inside of the blaster looks like. Uh, this is it in its absolute stock form. If you need help putting it back together, I'll try and get a better angle on that. Um, what we're really going to be worried about is this turret taking out the air restrictors inside of it. Uh, I don't have another spring to uh, either do a replacement or an addition to, so we'll see what we can do about spring tension, but we might not end up doing anything with that. But overall, this, the old blasters were pretty streamlined. They weren't worried about locks or anything like that. It's really kind of hard to mess up a revolver uh, with locks and stuff, so I don't think there are any locks to remove, but if there are, I'll let you know about that. So, first thing we're going to do is actually remove this entire turret piece. This whole thing slides out as one unit. Uh, this is an important piece because that's what catches down here. Right here. There's a little nub that gets caught on all these gears that actually rotates the barrel of uh, the turret. It looks complicated, but it's really not. I'll show you it piece by piece. Um, yeah, pieces will pop out very often. Uh, don't worry about it, because all pieces are replaceable. Yeah, you, can that um, you can go ahead and take this gray piece, or whatever color it is on your particular model, out of the back. Uh, we'll put it back in later, just to uh, kind of keep everything out of the way. So, we're going to unscrew the air restrictor turret, and I'll show you what it looks like when I got it ready. Alright, so it's important to know, um, Whenever I had done this on a blue version of it, uh, that was a newer 2005 model, Hasbro had used a Phillips, well, Phillips head screws all around this. This is a 2003 model and therefore is older and as a form of uh, machine screwing, there are five triangular shaped uh, screws inside of this turret housing. Now, I do not have a triangular shaped bit, so my first instinct was to grab my trusty pair of scissors. Scissors are usually a good choice to get past these uh, triangular bits, but these are so far seated down in there that my, screw my uh, scissors actually do not reach to the screws. If you have a uh, triangular shaped bit, no problem. If you have really crazy long uh, scissors, you won't really have a problem either. But if those two options are out, you can always do plan Z, which is just kind of a joke. Um, I took a pair of wire cutters, as you 
be really used to any sharp instrument. Uh, I would not use a pair of scissors for this though. And I've snipped all around below where the screws go. Now the point of the screw is to keep this turret housing together. So you're going to have to glue these or um, I guess theoretically you could weld the plastic back uh, with a soldering iron. But you're going to have to reattach it firmly once you've uh, modified the inside of it. You don't actually have to do anything to the rotational housing, this little white thing up here. This is really hard to do with this kind of GoPro camera. Um, but once you've gotten the screws removed or loosened or however you want, you're going to pop this top off. And you'll see a lot of random stuff falling. I'm going to show you what's good to keep and what's bad to throw away. Alright, so you see all these little spring things popping out. These are air restrictor springs, and if you've read my post on air restrictors, you'd know that ahead of time. I'll try and get a little bit of light on it. See. Maybe. Okay. That's air restrictor spring. These things are what engage the actual air restrictors, which are these things. These things are really good for protecting your gun from dry firing, which is pulling the trigger and shooting the gun without an actual um, dart in there. <laughs> because if not, the plunger rod that actually pushes the air out would just slam into the front of the gun and eventually break it. And you don't want to do that. Hasbro doesn't want to break your guns. So they put these in there. The downside to them is that they restrict air. And we want as much airflow to our blaster as possible to push our darts the farthest. So, any of the springs and the three pronged air restrictors can be completely removed, and there should be ten of them in all. Uh, you can put them off into a pile for the time being, or just completely throw them away because you do not need them. What you do need is the barrel post and the little lip protecting it. So I'll show you. This one did not pop out. So wiggle it out very easily. Alright. This gets thrown away. And the accompanying spring gets thrown away. This thing you keep. I'll explain why here in a second. So I'm going to out all these. Alright, as you can see, I've already worked through 9 out of 10 of the discs. Uh, I don't really want to pop out the middle of them. Actually, I might go ahead just, just for completeness. Uh, I normally don't because it doesn't really give you that much of an advantage, but if I'm going to give a mod guide, I might as well show you how to completely modify it. But, this is what I'm referring to right now, is the barrel post. Now, as you guys probably know, barrel posts are there to keep um, foreign objects from getting inside the blaster. If kid wants to shove a battery down his nerf blaster, he can't do it because of this nice little post. Well. Whenever we're trying to use new elite darts, or especially in elite guns, uh, trying to use streamlines, which are the classic orange uh, darts, such as this, there's a rod inside of the darts that uh, are blocked by this uh, barrel post. So they want you to use the gun specific to the blast dart specific to that blaster. Well, that's not always good whenever you're out in the Nerf War if you've got a bin like mine with random assortment of darts. So it's very nice, you can just snip this off. Uh, it is important to note that I do not really use any power tools. I use a standard little, uh, see it over there in the corner, a standard little um, tool kit that I got from Walmart for Christmas like two years ago. Um, the only really advanced thing I have is a soldering iron for electronical, electronical, wow, electrical connections. Other than that, I use basic hand tools. Uh, I don't use a Dremel or anything like that, so anybody can do what I'm telling you guys. Um, I'm literally as basic as they come, but you can even take uh, scissors if you want to. But I just take my wire cutters, put it at the base, and snip, just like that. There it goes. Throw the barrel post away. you got to keep this little disc, though. Uh, I will show you really quick how to tap out the middle of that just to get maximum airflow. Again, it's not necessary, but for completeness, I'll just show you how to do it. This is what I meant by knocking out this middle point. Little point. Um, if you'll remember from the last bit, there were six holes inside of it, three of which were covered by the air restrictor, and the other three were just always open to let you out some air. Well, 
I have taken a hammer and a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, completely still upset because flathead is easier to just trim with the weight. I have just chiseled out the middle of it. Alright guys, so after you've knocked out all the little air restricted plates, what you're going to do is take your turret and just pop them back on with little caps. They go all around the side and the part that you've been hammering out um, where the barrel posts were need to be going inside of the turret because as you can remember the barrel, pers barrel posts were inside of the turret and now you can see all the way out and if this was attached you would see all the way into the plunger plunger housing which is good that means it's an absolute straight shot for the air to go right to the dark which gives us maximum performance Pop them all on, just like that. And then you're going to reattach them to this ring. Now, if you just were a good little boy and unscrewed all of the triangular screws or had a uh, 2005 model and didn't even have to worry about that junk, you'll be set. You'll be set and just reattach everything. If, however, you did the me and chopped off these little posts, you're going to have a little bit of difficulty getting them back together. Uh, you just have to wiggle it into place. And I haven't decided how I'm going to reattach them yet, but I'll let you know wherever I do. And you're going to make sure you seal that back on so it doesn't pop off whenever you're running. Because that would really ruin your nerfing experience. Way too close. But I'll let you know what I decide whenever I get that set up. And we're going to talk about the spring and plunger housing next. So I decided to go all quick and dirty on it this time, um, just because it's encased. It's a mod video, and I really don't care about this one. This is not going to be like a very special one to me. Um, the way I decided to fix it was just a simple dab of hot glue in there. Uh, epoxy, if you have it, or really Gorilla Glue is going to expand, so I wouldn't use that. But Super Glue or anything like that would be stronger. But it's good enough for now, and it's going to be encased in the housing. So it's not going to get jostled around or anything like that, so I'm not worried about it snapping off. Uh, it's sturdy as is, but, yeah, so that's that. Okay, on to the plunger tube. So this entire thing is the plunger tube splat part. This is the trigger activated catch. See the actuation right there. And this is what I was referring to about your slide. That little metal pin. Here. This pin goes through this spring, with a little loop on it, to be pulled back. But it pulls this entire thing, this white rail. It pulls it all the way back, which primes your spring. Alright, so what you gotta do is get this plunger tube out. And that's as simple as just lifting out. Now, as you probably saw, my catch spring flew off, and this is a very important spring. This is what actually, um, allows your blaster to be fired. So any springs that fly off need to be put off to the side and cared for. But the rest of this pops out and you've got this much. Whoa, that's the front piece. And stuff will pop out. That's kind of why I'm making this video. And I'll get the other piece in so that's crawling the table you um, this is why I'm making the video so that you can learn how to put it back together. But this whole thing comes out what you've got. This is your catch. The catch is pretty tough as it is because it's such an old blaster. They made them really, really tough. But the spring, however, is not that great. Um, really, if you've got a night finder spring, you can put that on that and it'll give it some more punch. Like I said, I don't have anything to enhance the spring tension. But what I could do, well, oh, there's that lip there. Um, is by putting a spacer, a hot glue spacer, uh, you put about a centimeter of uh, hot glue around it like a ring, and that makes it compress much earlier than it would if there was the no hot glue there. But I'm not even going to worry about that because of that little lip. Uh, this spring will be plenty tough enough for my purposes. What I want to talk about now is the O-ring. The O-ring is what gives it its seal against the plunger and 
what pushes air. I mean, the idea of things that's anything like that. But it has a very weak seal right now, so we're going to take a little screwdriver and pop the O-ring off. Now, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either replace the O-ring altogether by getting a larger size diameter one, which is always a good option if you want to spend money, but I started this for casual nerfing. I didn't want to buy a ton of junk. And I bought very limited amounts of stuff, and I'm going to continue that trend. So I'm going to be cheap and actually go with creating more friction. Uh, Teflon tape is the best. What I have on hand is electrical tape. Now you can do it by cutting it into strips and wrapping the inside of it. What I personally do is I just wrap electrical tape around the actual outside of it and the o-ring compresses it in. So I'll show you what happens after you wrap it and you'll just slide the o-ring right back on. Alright, so it's going to be kind of hard to develop because it's black electrical tape on a black o-ring. But, as you can see, I've wrapped electrical tape on the inside of it, just one lap around, and put the o-ring back on top. Now, it's protruding out much more than it was, which is a very good sign uh, for increased airflow. But if you just put it back in the blaster as is, it's going to be scraping up and down across it um, on the inside of the plunger, and it's not going to perform as well. So what you have to do is you have to grease up the inside of it. Now, white lithium grease is honestly, in my opinion, the best uh, form of lubricant, but I don't have any on hand, so I'm going to go with what I have and what a lot of you, I'm sure, have. Vaseline, or petroleum jelly, as well, this is specifically Rexol. Uh, oh no, copyright infringement. Not really, but whatever. Uh, any sort of petroleum jelly works better than nothing. Um, you want to be careful. So O-rings that will degrade, but for the most part, it is O-ring safe, which is important because you don't want to eat your O-ring away. That gives you no air seal, and that's where your blaster is basically ruined. And then you will have to buy another O-ring. But I digress. So you want to be very generous. You don't want more is a much better than having less. Um, the worst thing that could happen by having too much is your darts start smelling like gasoline, which is not that big of a deal. But just enough to have a nice little perimeter. Uh, and what I like to do with the rest on it is I actually put it inside of the plunger housing itself just to give it a little bit of extra lubrication. This one was bone dry. Tells you how old it, this thing is. But after that, you just put the plunger back inside and kind of wiggle it on. And that's much better. What you do is just once you check it, Put your thumb over it and pull back. And that's a pretty good air seal for as old as this blaster is. You might even be able to hear that, the air that's pushing out. So that's really good. Um, this spring is important for uh, actually getting a good seal with the plunger and the blaster uh, turret. So just slide on like that. No big deal. So that's it for the plunger section. I'm going to put it back on the blaster and show you what it looks like. Alright, this should be the final view before I close up the blaster and show you it outside. Uh, we put the turret back in along with its rail. You just have to space it out evenly to where the rotational um, brace, I guess, is si situated right here. Gears, uh, turret alignment, and then turret itself, and you can see a little hot glue work. Um, there is a little spring right under here underneath the trigger. That's what gives it that snappy uh, trigger return. Uh, if that pops off, there's a little nub. It's very simple to get back on. Make sure that you put your catch spring back in. As I was talking about earlier, that's actually what lets the blaster uh, fire when you pull the trigger back. Which I'll try and show you. It pushes up on that little catch. But the plunger rod is back in. This is the spring I was talking about with the little hole. The plunger's aligned. We've got our seal going on. Everything's functioning properly. Tack rail pieces back in and our stocks back in. Uh, what I like to do to make sure that I have a very nice fit, I might actually scoot up to show you this, is I'll put the back slide on first. And 
actually push it through that loop before I put the other piece of the shell on. That way I know that it's looped through and it saves me a lot of time and trouble. So I'm going to snap it back together and we'll show you what happens. Alright guys, this is my final segment on the uh, Nerf 2003 Dart Tag and Dart Blaster thing. Yeah, we're going to roll with that. Uh, just for future reference, this is the corner of my house. Uh, I always shoot from the corner onwards, so this is obviously zero feet. So everything I say from here on is from this arbitrary standpoint. I've loaded up with several different types of ammunition. Uh, Streamline, Zombie Strike, uh, Nerf Elite, off-brand, generic things I got online, and suction cups. So we're going to shoot them off and see what I did. I didn't get a standard shot, uh, standard range thing. I'm not normally going to do range tests, I'm just going to kind of shoot them off and give you approximations, but these are all with uh, flat shots. Streamlines are hitting about 20 feet, about 20 foot. They all seem to be hitting around 20 feet. Overall, definitely worth doing. It's cheap. Actually, if you don't use hot glue, it's free, uh, except for your time. So, if you got nothing better to do and you just got a bunch of these, why not? You know, free, easy way to improve your blasters. Um, this is kind of like, this was really my first uh, mod style video and I'm really testing out camera angles and such. So, I guess I'm going to find out how well I did. I'm probably not going to do very many vintage blasters just because there's a crap load of um, mod guides already out there in the video. You got Drac and Coop who did really old ones. Um, but for newer ones, I may every now and then. This is just kind of giving me a feel of what's going on. But hopefully, this is a pretty informative video and lets you know what's going on and gives you a baseline for other videos. But um, thanks for watching. If I do end up putting this on a YouTube channel, uh, if you like the video, like it and subscribe. I mean, I'll take all the help I can get. But, and of course, tactical rail still holds attachments if you want to do something like that. But, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I'll catch you around.